Welcome back to the Delaware Way. We are joined by Lieutenant Governor-elect in Delaware, Bethany Hall Long, currently Senator Bethany Hall Long. Uh, as you move into the new administration as Lieutenant Governor, there is this uncertainty about what the funding is going to be for the Affordable Care Act, if the Affordable Care Act is even going to be around. Is that a concern of yours? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're we're very concerned about, you know, health care, and I'm proud of Delaware. I'm very proud of what uh, Mark Hell administration going into, um, you know, Governor Luck Carney administration, that we provide, I think, some of the most cutting edge programs. We're a small state. We're often role modeled. We are often our, many of our cancer prevention programs, our outreach in the community. Uh, we are known for uh, really getting things right. Certainly we have room to grow. We're not perfect. Uh, and so the Affordable Care Act is an important, you know, valid concern that we're facing. And, and if they were to repeal it, mm -hmm. and, and I, I I even hesitate to talk about it because we don't even have any idea right. what's going to happen and it seems to be ever changing. But if they were to repeal it, what would be the effect on the state of Delaware? Right. Well, you know, I, I believe a couple couple things you have to keep in mind uh, with Delaware being a small state. And we, we had a pretty progressive plan before uh, using our health fund money, our cancer programs. We have a great safety net of nonprofits who provide a lot of services that some larger states don't have. Also, we have a very expansive Medicaid program. You know, a lot of people get, ooh, Medicaid, but Medicaid is our seniors often in our nursing homes. Um, and it's also those working people who just don't get insurance to their jobs, don't make enough. And so we have a robust Medicaid program that would pick up a lot of the safety net. So then you're thinking, well, wow, that's cost. But if you structure your Medicaid programs and other cost programs effectively, focused on prevention, focused on getting people the care that they need, like substance abuse, mental health, so they don't end up in our prison where it's costing us more. You can actually, we'll be, we will be okay. We're not gonna be perfect if the Affordable Care Act is repealed. I also think there's a lot of talk when you're outside of politics, you're new. Uh, the new presidential administration, uh, you know, can make promises, but when you're in the arena, you know, I think people hear, even uh, our president-elect talk about the value of people having access to service and not being denied for a pre-existing condition. So I think you're right. I think, you know, there's a lot of worry, uh, but knowing policy and politics, sometimes it moves a lot slower than the rhetoric you hear on the campaign trail. So I'm somewhat optimistic that perhaps we can improve, because the Affordable Care Act does need improving. We can improve upon the things that haven't worked and the challenges that's caused in our business community. So you're optimistic. You're optimistic yes. that the changes will be made will be good changes. I'm hopeful. I, you know, I'm hopeful. You know, I've, I've learned to never go one way or the other. But if you if you know me, being a public health nurse, uh, you know, when you're faced with tough times, you come with a solution and you get the brightest minds in the room. And so states, I'm very confident with our state, you know, with uh, our new leadership, uh, Lisa Blunt Rochester going to Congress with Senator Coons and Carper as well as Governor-elect um, Don Carney and our new insurance commissioner, Trinidad Navarro. I'm very confident in all of their uh, background skill set and their excellent you know, policymaker staff that they're gonna have at the table. You, you mentioned a couple of times that, that you were a nurse and you mentioned, you still are a nurse, yes, and you mentioned yes, a couple of times that you're a, a professor and that was a theme of your campaign right. and your acceptance. Right. Is there a number one goal? Is there something that you're going in saying, I'm going to focus on this and this is the most important yes. thing to me? Well, you know, number, uh, number one social problem that we're having right now is the mental health, behavioral health substance abuse issue. That is a huge issue. Part of that is a, uh, a plan for us to work most effectively in the community, whether it's outreach workers working with their insurance companies to really be um, kind of boots on the ground in our high risk zip codes in the areas where we can really cut costs, improve lives, also public safety at the same time and crime. They all kind of marry and they converge. And it's not just here where we're taping today in the city of Wilmington, it's in many of the cities throughout the state and our small towns. So it's an issue that I think is a low hanging fruit, but a really important hanging fruit, mental health, behavioral health. Wonderful, thank you so much. Congratulations Thanks. again. Thanks. Lieutenant Governor-elect, Bethany Hall Long, currently center, soon to be, drop the elect part, yeah. and you'll be just <laughs> Lieutenant Governor. When we come back, there is a new initiative by the state to stop holiday traffic deaths. We'll explain, it's, it's actually cute when we come right back.